ఇంజనీర్ బి ప్రశాంత్ ఏఎంఐ కమిటీ మెంబర్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ కమిటీ అండ్ కన్వీనర్ ఆఫ్ ది ఈవెంట్ పాస్ట్ ప్రెసిడెంట్స్ పాస్ట్ వైస్ ప్రెసిడెంట్స్ కౌన్సిల్ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఐఐ పాస్ట్ చైర్మన్ ఇమిడియట్ పాస్ట్ చైర్మన్ పాస్ట్ ఆనరీ సెక్రటరీస్ కమిటీ మెంబర్స్ అండ్ కార్పొరేట్ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఐఐ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ డిస్టింగ్విష్డ్ గెస్ట్ ఫ్యామిలీ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ డాక్టర్ ఎన్విఆర్ఎల్ అండ్ రావు గారు దట్ ఈస్ ఈ సన్ అండ్ ఎక్స్ఎంఎల్సి డాక్టర్ రామచంద్రరావు గారు అండ్ డాక్టర్ ఎన్వి రమణారావు గారు అండ్ రిప్రజెంటేటివ్స్ ఆఫ్ మీడియా వడ్డింగ్ ఇంజనీర్స్ లేడీస్ అండ్ జెంటిల్మెన్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ టు ఆల్ వన్స్ అగైన్ టుడే ఐ ఆమ్ వెరీ హ్యాపీ అండ్ కన్సర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ గ్రేట్ ఆనర్ డిస్టర్బ్డ్ ఆన్ మీ టు పి ఎమిస్ దిస్ అగస్ట్ గ్యాదరింగ్ అండ్ ఐ ఎక్స్టెండ్ ఏ హార్ట్ టీ అండ్ వామ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ టు దిస్ డాక్టర్ ఎన్విఆర్ఎల్ఎన్ రావు ఫిఫ్త్ ఎండోమెంట్ లెక్చర్ బై డాక్టర్ అనిల్ జోసఫ్ ఇస్ ఎ ఆనర్ డిస్టర్బ్డ్ ఆన్ ది అనర్స్ by dr anil joseph fie president elect igs council member iei and managing director geo structure private limited has very kindly and spontaneously conveyed his consent to grace this function and share their rich experiences late dr nvrl and rao farmer professor department of civil engineering and usmania university requested the telangana state center on instituting annual endowment lecture in his honor on his birthday every year the telangana state center committee adjourns meeting held on 27th january 2018 has unanimously resolved to organize an endowment lecture annually at our center in the honor of the veteran engineer professor nv rln rao garu who contributed in the field of engineering education accordingly this endowment lecture is org- is being organized every year from 2018 onwards on his birthday that is 26 october today i am very happy to be associated with this memorable event and i would like to say few words about our telangana state center we are proud to announce that the telangana state center of the iei is the only and first center out of 125 center in the country awarded with iso 9012 2015 certification <coughs> in the history of 100 years of iei telangana state center is the legacy of restwell nizam hyderabad state center formed on 28th august 2016 after bifurcation of the ap state center the telangana state center has 10000 plus corporate members on its rolls and 19000 plus and on carpet members in its fold and it is one of the most active centers of iei which engage successfully in translating the iea objectives mission vision into practice within the formation of two years the telangana state center bagged the best state center award for two consecutive years telangana state center has been playing a very important role in dissemination of information on engineering and contemporary technology bringing industry academia experts and professionals together on the same platform by regularly organizing international conferences national conferences all india seminars conferences workshops and round table conferences panel discussion throughout the year almost one program almost every third or fourth day i am glad to inform that the telangana state center of the institution of engineers has been regularly organizing 18 endowment lectures every year on the birthdays in the honor of the eminent engineers like engineer v subbarao engineer m tirupati reddy dr j prashottam rao and engineer koka krishna mohan rao engineer g v subbarao engineer t anmant rao engineer ap ranganatha swami డాక్టర్ ఎస్ రాఘవాచారి డాక్టర్ నార్ల తాతారావు ఇంజనీర్ మాటూర్ గోపాల్ రావు ఇంజనీర్ గుర్రం కోటిరెడ్డి ఇంజనీర్ అట్టూరు వెంకటేశ్వర రావు డాక్టర్ ఏ రామకృష్ణ ఇంజనీర్ ఆర్ఎల్ రాజు ఎండో ఎండోమెంట్ లెక్చర్ డాక్టర్ జాన్ ఏ ముర్రే డాక్టర్ ఎన్వి ఆర్ఎల్ఎన్ రావు అండ్ 
ఇంజనీర్స్ ఎల్ వెంకటకృష్ణ అయ్యర్ కేవి శ్రీనివాసరావు అండ్ ఎంఎల్ స్వామి అండ్ ఇంజనీర్ ఐ బసవరాజు ఎండోమెంట్ లెక్చర్స్ ఐ టేక్ దిస్ ఆపర్చునిటీ టు సే ఫ్యూ వర్డ్స్ అబౌట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఎన్విఆర్ ఎల్ ఎన్ రావు గారు ప్రొఫెసర్ ఎన్విఆర్ ఎల్ ఎన్ రావు గారు అప్టైన్ బిఎస్సి ఇంజనీరింగ్ సివిల్ అండ్ ఈజ్ మాస్టర్ ఇన్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ అండ్ పిహెచ్డి ఇన్ జియో టెక్నికల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ హీ వాజ్ ఎ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఆఫ్ సివిల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ బిర్లా ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ టెక్నాలజీ మెస్రా రాంచీ అండ్ ఎట్ ఉస్మానియా యూనివర్సిటీ ఫ్రమ్ ది ఇయర్ నైన్టీన్ సెవెంటీ వన్ సెవెంటీ ఫోర్ అండ్ ఆన్ సూపర్ అండ్ నెటింగ్ రిలింగ్ క్విస్ట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఎట్ ఉస్మానియా యూనివర్సిటీ సిన్స్ నైన్టీన్ ఫిఫ్టీ నైన్ ఈ ఇన్వాల్వ్ ఇన్ టీచింగ్ రీసెర్చ్ అండ్ కన్సల్టెన్సీ ఇన్ జియో టెక్నికల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ కవరింగ్ సైట్ ఇన్వెస్టిగేషన్స్ సాయిల్ టెస్టింగ్ ఫర్ ఫౌండేషన్స్ ఆఫ్ సివిల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ స్ట్రక్చర్స్ ఈ హెస్ విజిటెడ్ యూఎస్ఎస్ఆర్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ సిక్స్టీ టూ యూఎస్ఏ అండ్ యూకే ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ నైన్టీ ఎయిట్ యాజ్ టూరిస్ట్ అండ్ ఇంట్రాక్టెడ్ విత్ సమ్ అకాడమిక్ క్విషన్స్ దేర్ ఆన్ బిహాఫ్ ఆఫ్ ది తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీర్స్ అండ్ ఆన్ మై ఓన్ బిహాఫ్ ఐ వన్స్ అగైన్ ఎక్స్టెండ్ ఎ హార్టీ వెల్కమ్ టు ది టుడేస్ చీఫ్ గెస్ట్ అండ్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ టు దిస్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఈవెంట్ అండ్ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ ది ఫ్యామిలీ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఎన్విఆర్ ఎల్ ఎన్ రావు గారు టు కైండ్లీ గివ్ దే రెస్పాన్స్ సార్ ఎక్స్ ఎంఎల్సి రామచంద్రరావు సార్ ఈజ్ ఆన్ లైన్ హలో సార్ రామచంద్రరావు సార్ రామచంద్రరావు గారు ఆయన మ్యూట్ చేయండి ఆయన రామచంద్రరావు గారిని మ్యూట్ చేయండి ఫాదర్ అండ్ ఆల్సో Uh, who has a uh, very close relation with many of them who are attending this program and uh, i'm happy that today's uh, uh, subject is also very relevant because uh, we have many uh, buildings which are uh, uh, raised very you know uh, in high rise buildings and which are illegally raised uh, being an advocate uh, i think that today's topic is also somewhat related to me because it was the order of the court that made uh, the decision of demolishing the uh noida twin tower and the technology used is also uh, should be known to the people that it is a engineering manuvers that we construct the houses or buildings which are 100 or 100 floors or whatever it may be but at the same time we are demolishing it with a few minutes and that is also the technology constructing is one technology and destructing is also one technology and this uh, everyone would be excited to know that what was the technology used to <coughs> in fact uh, Uh, demolished those twin building in noida and uh, i thank the organizers for uh, having organized and uh, taking up the very relevant and contemporary subject and i thank the organizers once again on behalf of my family members i thank all the uh, participants here and all the organizers for conducting this program thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much now, may, you. may i request dr g venkata subbai garu our honorary secretary to kindly introduce today's chief guest our dr anil joseph sir forward to dr venkata subbai garu dr subbai garu sir it is a pleasure for me to introduce chief guest and today's speaker Dr. Anil Joseph. So, Dr. Anil Joseph did graduation and post-graduate civil engineering from NIT Surat. He was awarded PhD from NIT Calicut on his work on pre-commission of soft-lying tests. He is the writing director of the Structures Private Limited, a leading foundation and structure and other institutions form based at Kochi. He has provided foundation and structural consultancy for more than 3,000 high-rise structures, including many landmark, multi-story and infrastructure projects in India and abroad in the last 30 years. His design of Nippon 
Toyota showroom at Kalamakari, Platinum at Maradu, Lulu Grand Hyatt Hotel and Convention Center, Balgati Island, Kochi, Hyatt Regency Hotel and Convention Center, Trisur, and Train Green Lagoon Resort at Kochi has won the ICI Ultratech Award for Outstanding Concrete Structure of Kerala in the building category in the year 2012, 17, 18, and 20, respectively. He is the Managing Director of Sescon, CEC1 Seconds Private Limited, a construction firm specialized in the execution of pile foundations, and also the Director of Engineers Diagnostic Center Private Limited, a firm specialized in geotechnical investigation and retrofitting works. He is the national president elect of Indian Geotechnical Society of 2023 and 2024, and is a national council member of Institution of Engineers India in civil division for the term 2021 to 2025. He is also the chairman of Indian Concrete Institute, Kochi Center, vice chairman of Builders Association of India, Kochi Chapter, and governing council member of Builders Association of India. He was a National Executive Committee member of the Indian Geological Geotechnical Society from 2012 to 2020 and is representing India in International Technical Committee TC220 on field monitoring in geomechanics and in Asian Technical Committee ASRTC14 on smart observation methods. He is the member of State Committee in Institution of Engineers Civil Division. Executive Committee Member of the Institution of Engineers Kochi Local Center, the immediate past president of Structural and Geotechnical Consultants, Kerala, immediate, immediate past state president of Graduate Association of Civil Engineers, the past president of Association of Piling Specialists, Kerala, Honorary Secretary of Indian Geotechnical Society, Kochi Chapter, Member of Association of Contracting Engineers, Member of Deep Foundation Institute, India, member of Indian Association of Structural Engineers, managing committee member of Kerala Management Association, and an adjunct, uh, adjunct faculty of Albertian Institute of Science and Technology, Kochi. He was also awarded PhD from Open International University on his work on tree stressing and hollow shell technology in earthquake resistant construction. Dr. Anil Joseph is also involved in various society activities such as Vice President of the Regional Sports Center, Kadavantara Kochin. He is an active Rotarian and was the former Assistant Governor of Rotary District 3201 and past President of Rotary Club of Kochin Downtown, etc. He was one among the top 10 Diamond Hall of Fame New Age Icon Change Makers 2020. He is married to Rina Anil, director of Seacons Private Limited, and he is blessed with two children. So with this brief introduction, I request Dr. Anil Joseph Garu to start his lecture. Sir, kindly. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. G. Vangadeya Subaya, Secretary of the State Center for the elaborate introduction. And first of all, I would like to thank my close friend, engineer B. Brahmareddy, the chairman, Institute of Engineers India, Telangana Center. And uh, what a wonderful job the IA Telangana Center is doing. 18 endowment and every third or fourth day he has got a program with so much of participation. A big round of applause for you, Sath, for the wonderful job you are doing for the Institution of Engineers India. Then I would also like to thank our my friend, Dr. I. Satyanarayana Raju, who is a colleague in the Civil Division Board. He is also present here in this meeting. Good evening, sir. It's a great privilege for me to get this opportunity to do an endowment lecture on Dr. N. V. R. L. Rao, a pioneer in the field of geotechnical engineering. He was the one who has done so much of works in this particular activity. And I am also very happy to note yeah. that our Professor Krishna Reddy, a student of him, is attending this talk, one of the best engineers in the world in the field of geo-environmental engineering. He is also listening to this talk. And it's a great privilege for me to have this opportunity to talk to you. 
again like ramendra rao sir pointed out it's very important that these are the points which the technology as an advocate he feels the importance of the legal aspect and the illegal buildings coming across the country and the technology of demolition which was applied to bring down is quite relevant especially in the field of geo geotechnical engineering because the surrounding buildings movements and safety is depends upon the vibration which is transmitted during the soil through the soil after the demolition process when the building comes and hit down on the ground so that's a, that's a very important aspect from the legal perspective also and i would like to thank the organizations before i move on to talk to you regarding the challenges which we faced as an engineer because we many of us are almost 95% of the people are the engineers who are listening to this and we should understand because it was always construction we were doing and we never had to think about how the demolition has to be done and demolition is required in many cases once certain times when the we want to reconstruct that area for a better development certain times fire accident happens yeah. the building is not occupied and there was the case of our burj earthquake after that so many buildings were brought down using this implosion technology but now the implosion technology has scaled up and there are many projects which is happening across the country so let me start with presentation my presentation by sharing Hope you can see the screen. Ramada, Ramada, sir, can you yeah, see yeah. this? We, we are able to see. We are able to see. Very clear. Okay, Anish, we are able to see this. Okay, so for this presentation, I will be switching off my video, and we will start working out after the uh, discussion. We will open it, and I will be talking regarding the engineering challenges behind the demolition of Super Tech Twin Tower, Noida. So I will be covering this in the next 45 minutes and touching upon the engineering behind demolition. What is detailed study of the implosion technologies? We will look into some of the videos of the failure and success of the blast and we'll come to the super tech in our Noida. What was the reason that building was made to collapse as per the direction of the Honorable Supreme Court of India? And as an engineer, what were the challenges the V team faced to overcome that and how we did the implosion calculations. I am not going in depth, but then to give, how, give you a bird's eye view about the challenges in the engineering. And once we make the blueprint as an engineer who makes the knowledge into practice, we have converted the drawings to field execution. And it is important that we have to under, assess the nearby building and in order to understand how the behavior is going to happen, we have gone for a test blast also. And we will have some review of Super Tech Tent Tower. So let us look into the engineering behind demolition. The demolition can be defined as dismantling, raising, destroying, or wrecking any building or structure, any part thereof by a pre-planned and controlled manner. So it's a well-planned, thoughtful engineering gone into it when we are going for that. Whenever a structure is to be demolished, we must method take adopted. The method has to be adopted based on the minimum duration, produce less noise, it causes no pollution beyond permissible limit, does not disturb the activity of the neighborhood and is economically viable. So the demolition method is selected after pre-demolition work such as surveying, removal of hazardous material and stability analysis report. So these are the different steps before we do the demolition. We survey the area, we remove the hazardous material, we make the engineering plan how to get it done and we take precautionary measures and then go for the system of demolition. So there are different systems for structural demolition. It comprises of progressive demolition, mechanism of controlled demolition, 
deconstruction or top down method and demolition of building by wrecking ball and demolition of building by implosion so if we can see that this is the conventional top down method where we remove from the top slab uh, go to the beam cut the columns and come down but it's a very time taking process and a lot of uh, time period is needed and a lot of human resources is also needed for that and second is the wrecking ball where we have massive balls will be hit with the crane to bring the building down so they are being used up to a height of about 30 meter and the hydraulic crushers are now available which is connected to a, a equipment and a crane systems and can crush the concrete and now there are long boom uh, crushers also available and the latest technologies which is happening is the implosion technology where we plan explosive and made them to detonate so that the building comes down without any damage to the surrounding so these are the i am not going to the theory part so these are the different comparison the method the principle the general condition and the benefit of the technology particular in this case so now let's focus on our technology that is the implosion technology where we use explosives and what the, what is needed we have to have protection from noise debris and vibration we have to evacuate the people we should have qualified blasters and check and cautionary handling of misfiring has to be done so what benefit excellent demolition strength would shorten the demolition period and reduce labor uh, but we have to do risk assessment required to be properly worked out now let us look into the detailed study of implosion so like i told implosion or explosion deconstruction is an effective and efficient method of deconstruction and can reduce both cost and time to bring dangerous multi story structure to ground implosion is where we strategically place the explosive and time it did not detonation so that structure collapses on itself in a matter of second minify, minimizing the physical damages to its immediate surrounding so the technique is that we weaken the columns critical support so that building can no longer withstand the force of gravity and it falls under its own weight and the challenge is that we plan it accordingly so that the load is enough so that there won't be a huge blast it will slowly fall down gradually and the vibration will be controlled so what are the pre blast consideration so this may include pre weakening of the structure strategy in placement of explosive and we plan the time delay so that the building will collapse the way we want so in pre weakening we will even cut the shear walls remove the non load bearing walls certain things we go for a test blast to understand what is the impact and to minimize the dispersion we go for uh, iron mesh wrapping geotextile wrapping trench or bun will be installed and cushioning material will be provided so this is a system of the technology where we go for the blast and make the building fall the way we want it to happen so these are the steps in uh, an a graphical representation survey the area study the building plan remove the toxic material remove non load bearing bolts drill holes in column put the explosives and go for the blast so this is the typical case where the test blast was carried out so you can see that before and the after photographs and this is the wrapping of geosynthetic layers in order to prevent the flying of debris and why that is needed i will explain as we move forward and then go for the ballasting of the charge time it into perfection so that the building falls down now let's look into some of the implosion videos so this is a video of a the implosion which happened in uh, canberra in australia and it was a tragedy and let's see how it happened Instead of a safe, fully contained enclosure, 
find someone I can try out on the other shore, the cow would be dead with charged with seal, mold, and suction by the force of the blood. Hope you all feel the seed and instantly kill nine of the Even today, no one can tell why the English turned into an excellent. For the very kind of sake and the detail of investigation of all this, it's right to remember the good people. I guess it's such an engineering question. The girl was still 480 meters from the demolition site, nearly 10 times the prescribed safe distance set down by contractors. But today, witnesses gave graphic accounts of huge chunks of steel thrown far further than that. Hope you were able to hear the volume. The voice was. Audible? Uh, it was audible, sir, but not uh, because it, English is different. No? <laughs> Let me the, the video voice was possible, no. uh, hearable? Yeah, yeah, it was. Really... Okay, okay. Now, so let's see. So, that was the failure of the Canberra hospital blast where the building which was supposed to fall down has become an explosion and the girl, my uh, told you, old girl was killed about 480 meters away. So there are many failures where the building has turned, the implosion technology has converted into an explosion problem and had killed people who are as far away as one kilometer away. So now let's see this video of another failure which has happened. If you look at this case, what happened? They did the implosion, but the energy force of the explosion was not good enough so that uh, the building didn't came down and building was left halfway. So the building uh, stood laughing at the people who went for the demolition. So let's see a couple of more videos of the failures which has happened. seeing that this is a very precise engineering which is needed and if something goes wrong it can be catastrophic so let's look into some of the success cases also so this is the case like it was prodded by our secretary g venkatesh veya that i am a structural engineer by profession and i have 3000 high rise building which i have designed i have never done a demolition of the building till 2020 when in 2019, the government of Kerala appointed me as a structural expert to bring down five high rises in Kerala, which had violated the CRS norms. And the tragedy was that their coastal regulation zone was no, no violated and they have constructed the building very close to the backwaters, which was not allowed. So Supreme Court clearly told that all these five buildings has to come down. But since this technology was not available on to bring these buildings, which are 20 floors high, so they asked me to go for a tendery and we found that about 14 people took part in the tender and we had this company called Jet Demolition and Edifice, Jet Demolition from South Africa and Edifice from Bombay who came and had uh, given the technology to bring down the buildings down. So this is a building called H2O which was designed by me in 2005 as a structural engineer and out of the five buildings which was brought down Four of the buildings was designed by me in the period 2005 to 6 and uh, the as per the order of the Supreme Court, I was put the engineering charge by the government to get all this building down without damage to the very 
thickly populated neighborhood with so many houses, petrol pumps, bridges, etc. So this is the video of the H2O fall. So I will just share that this is a success case. So that was similar to this, and this is the case of a golden Kailaram. Again, this is a 20-story building very close by. This is the 17-story building, which was to be brought down, and you can see the backwaters. So this is the enough setback was not provided and we have to go for the So you can see that no debris has fallen into the water and the building which is very close by is safe and we brought, put our engineering to bring it down without damaging the neighborhood. So now let's go to what happened in Noida. It was in the media throughout in the last, in the, this blast we did in 28th of August 2022 and this was super tucked into our Noida. And uh, you know, Noida is one of the is the new Okla Industrial Development Authority uh, in the state of Uttar Pradesh, very close to Delhi. And these super tech interweights are located in sector 93A, and it comprises of seven lakh square feet of area with 915 flats and 21 shops. So they were planned to have 40 floors each. The two structures has different height. Apex had 32 floors and stood at 103 meter tall. While CM, the smaller one, had 29 floors and stood at 97 meter. And that, that was at the halfway down the construction. Actually, both were having 40 floors each. And they have a total build up area of 7.5 lakhs per feet constructed. So you can see the plan here. So this is the towers. And you can see how close the building is. So you can see that towers 1, 2, 3. The gap between these two buildings is just 9 meter. And their, found, uh, their second level basements were connected with each other. So we have to disconnect that and go for the blast and bring it down without the height of the building is 103 meters. And we have to bring it down without damaging that. And if you look at this side, it's all ATS village where they have other high rise buildings. So these neighboring buildings are also 12 floors height. So we have to bring it down without damaging this. So the, here you can see that this is the building in the view. So 2005, they have given the sanction for 14 towers and this particular area was given as an open space. Earlier, later, they have acquired more area and they have increased the number of towers. And when the construction was happening, they changed to G plus 11 in 2006. And in for these two particular towers, 2009, they made to 24. And in 2012, they moved to 40 floors. So the neighboring residents welfare association moved the Alagabad High Court against the tower in December 2012. So it's a long battle. So the battle which took from 2012 to 2022. And in April 2014, the High Court rules towers are illegal and orders demolition. So the work stopped in 2014 when the height was, was pointed out. And Supreme Court in August 2021 ordered the demolition of the super tech tin tower located in sector 93A uh, because it was built without taking the consent of the individual flat owners in the nearby building as required under the uh, UP Apartment Act. On January 17, Top Court also appointed the jet demolition company and edifice to do the job. And in this particular case, I was part of the jet demolition company of South Africa with the experience we had in uh, Cochin Blast, they are requested to be part of the team. And since it was an engineering challenge, I took up the responsibility and was part of the team to get the part to assess the engineering aspects. So the challenges, yes, like I pointed out, a very thickly neighborhood. We had to evacuate about 5,000 people before we went for the blast. 
uh, then uh, the, there is a gale gas pipeline going within the boundary of the building. And it is just 23 meter and 45 meter away from the structure. And it's a high pressurized gas pipeline which is going. And we have to bring the building down without damaging that. Then at the challenges, the pipeline four meter below, I told what we did, we make steel plates for protection for that. Then we made a berm on top of that. Then we had rubber cushions, geosynthetics, different technologies were adapted to make this safe. And uh, after two, the tower, which is very close by, is just uh, nine meter away. And we have to do the explosion without damaging this. So this is the skyscrapers which were brought down. So this, uh, the first one, AXA tower is under, uh, the work is going on for the blast. So the, that is being done to redevelop that area. And the world record currently, and now you can see that Super Tuck Pindor joins the league of the skyscrapers which are demolished by the explosion technology, the demolition technology. And you can see that the biggest building which was happened so far is the 215 meter Union Carbide building in New York, demolished in 2021. And this is the 103 meter tin towers in Noida. So there are other challenges like the factors where we have went for a lot of fire force engines were there, water spraying was there to control, debris to be removed, it has to be recycled to prevent the environmental pollution and the challenge of the cracks likely to form in the neighboring building, the tremors formed, that has to be also be taken into consideration. So we did a lot of homework. Actually, we started this activity from the month of February and it uh, went around and by, in, by uh, August 21st was the date given by the Supreme Court. Finally, God gave an extension that you can do the blasting from August 28th to September 4th any day. And it should not cross that before that the work has to be completed. Now, let's look into some of the engineering, how we did this. So this is the basic theory. If you look in this photograph, so that zero blast, that's the, the once the buzzer is pressed, that blast happens in that light. After that, after one second, the nest blast happened. The two line, the second line of blast happens. Three seconds, the th at the third second, the three bl line blast happens. And you can see that in seven seconds, the entire blast will happen. And it takes two seconds for the building to fall down. So this massive building, which cost 500 crores of rupees, was brought down in a span of nine seconds. So that was the engineering challenge. So. These are the different things. We can see that if you look at the figure, there are buildings with uh, red color as well as uh, floors with red color and blue color. So they are called the primary blast floors and the secondary blast floors. So we are blasting only the column, not the beam and slab. So the columns are blast in such a way that the concrete moves out and the uh, steel buckles down so that there is a cushioning effect on the fall on the ground. Otherwise, it will turn it into a earthquake sort of vibrations. So that is where the engineering technology slides. And the secondary for the blue color, we blast only select columns so that our floors, uh, the building falls in the way we want. So the, I told that there is a small gap where we want to get the building down. So that is where the engineering works were carried out to get it done. And how do we work out? So this is the equation where the breaching charges, we can, uh, breaching charges can be, removed is given by this equation P is equal to R cube KC by which we know how much TND is required to bring the material down. And again, I told there are two challenges. One is the blasting vibration and the other is the touchdown vibration. So blasting vibration is generated by the explosion of explosives in the short hall. Only a smart, only small part of the energy goes through the columns and walls to the foundation. So it has got little impact on the surrounding environment. Our biggest challenge is the touchdown vibration, where the building comes and falls and hit the ground. So how we do that, that we sequence in such a way that at a time less than 1000 tons only hit the ground. So we will do the touchdown calculation and these are the accelerometers and sensors which are provided in order to prevent the, uh, in order to measure what exactly is happening during the process. So uh, that's worked out. And this is the equation by which we work out what will be the impact that is going to come happen. So we know what is the fall height. 
So based on the mass which is hitting the ground and R is the distance, we can work out what is the velocity of the impact which is coming. So based on the velocity of impact, we can predict how the building is going to behave. So this is the general guidelines. If your velocity is less than 3.5 centimeter per second, there won't be any damage. If it is 5.5 centimeter per second, there might be slight cracking. If it is 8 centimeter, cracking will happen. And if the vibration intensity we cannot control, then it will turn into an explosion and there will be severe cracking of the buildings nearby. So that is a, such a thin margin of error. Only we have to have it done and get it done, completed. So we did all the works in our drawing. Blueprints were ready. All the calculations from different perspectives were thought in and we fixed and we now we have to convert the drawings to the field for execution. Now we can see that a shock capacity ditch was failed. We have laid sandbags. Berms were formed, rubber tires were provided as cushion, and you can see the geotestile layer laid here in order to prevent from the debris flying. And you can see that we were doing a perfect measurement of engineering. So we were measuring the ground demolish vibrations, by exactly understanding what is happening. In fact, we had so much of interest in instrumentation that we spent about five crore rupees on instrumenting to understand what was happening. And also I would like to thank CBRI and uh, who did a wonderful job, Central Building Research Institute was appointed by the Supreme Court to monitor our calculation and design. And they also did a wonderful job. Here you can see that geophones, which is provided, which is placed here. These are the geophones, which are very sensitive equipment, which can capture the vibration which is happening. And it is automatically recorded there. And these accelerometers are connected to the computer system where we keep monitoring what exactly is happening and uh, the behavior. And you can see that the drilling was opening, the damages getting rectified and non-destructive testing of the surrounding building. Yes, we had so much of buildings nearby that we have to measure, monitor and document every building. So a nine member team from Geostructurals and IIT Madras was put in charge of that. And we measured that in such a way that we were able to predict what will be the behavior of the vibration or the damage which is happening in a range of 50 to 200 meters. So here you can see a typical video where how the blast is controlled. So you can see that once the load hits, the first waves come. Then there is delay and second hit will happen. So we are not allowing the load to peak. So we are balancing that. Yeah. So you can see that then again the set nest fall happens. So this is how we control the engineering here. How we control the damages. So this is the typical accelerometer setup. And this is the geophone setup. And this is, you can see that the team from IIT Madras who is using the seismographs to geophones to measure the data and the accelerometer being picked in and is monitored in the control station uh, with the networking to understand what is the real behavior happening. And nearby building and uh, uh, test blast also, we did pre and post blast structural integrity assessment of all the nearby building. So all the touchdown vibration and the collapse of the product tin tower uh, using ETA, it was modeled in ETAPS three towers in Emerald called and which were very close by the 50 meter uh, radius, four towers in ATS village was closely monitored, each and every records was made. The remaining uh, area also rapid visual assessment was carried out and documentations was completed. The preparation of demolition work started in February. A major uh, preparation includes structural assessment of tin towers and nearby structures and connection in basement between the tower and nearby building of super tax was removed and manual removal of all dead weight of the tower, which are non-structural to reduce structure to its bare frame. And we cut certain shear walls in order to bring it down. So you can see that how the removal of the things is happening. And in order to understand how the behavior is going to happen, we went for a test blast on uh, April 10th, 2022. And uh, we blasted four pillars in the basement and one on the 14th floor. And we understood how the behavior is happening. And based on that data, we made, measured the vibrations and we predicted how it is going to happen. And we did our re-engineering and came up with the solution. What exactly has to go in to go for that?
again all the structure audits of all these towers were carried out which took about two to two and a half months time so all those records were made and you can see that even my min very minor cracks were recorded and crack meters were provided how it is going to behave and the structures were assessed that you can see that entity test going on for samples being taken to understand how the behavior is happening the results of the entity test are shown here rebound hammer test and then we have to predict the vibration how it's going to behave and we took the expertise of a company called vibrock in london who did a lot of homework and came up with the theory that the maximum vibration intensity is going to be 34 mm per second at a distance of 10 meter so based on that we worked out what is the structural models were made of the neighboring building in aster 2 which was very close by and we remodeled the forces into the structure to understand how the building is going to behave so you can see that this is the earthquake intensity graph and this is the building basement plus ground plus 12 floors and uh, then the based on the strength we worked out and the model was made so this is the frame structure thing then uh, here is the three dimensional model you can see that how the building is modeled and we induce the behavior of the forces of the blast as well as earthquake to understand how the behavior is happened and compared with that of the uh, as per the guidance of the is code so acceleration versus time history was developed and these were the different cases of the models all the surroundings were subject to buildings were subjected to different loading and understood how the building is behaving during a blast load so you can see this videos so during the earthquake load how the building is animated and how the move behavior is happening was stimulated after uh, working out the impact as per the governing codes and this is the blast loading so you can see that how the blast loading behaves something that happens and the waves coming in and hitting the building how the building is behaving it was studied we understood where the weakness is there we strengthened that we went for carbon wrapping in certain cases certain cases we went for jacketing so it was ensured that wherever the weakness was there we made sure that it is capable to withstand the loading so after that this is the results i don't want to spend time on that due to scarcity of time i am skipping the calculation part on the graph part of the behavior how it happens but then as per the is 1893 criteria the deflection and the displacement and the drift were within the permissible limit so we worked out the analysis in different cases and found that the building is safe to withstand the vibration loading and especially the blast loading and it has got a, only the impact which is going to happen during the blast will be almost 1 by 10 to that of a earthquake blast which is going to happen the way if everything goes as what we plan if everything doesn't go as what we plan it we have to have the risk there so the uh, risk assessment was done and we have insured the entire building surrounding building to a tune of 100 crores we had 50 ambulances ready hospitals were made ready fire engines were made ready because the technology can go wrong if something goes wrong we had all the backup plans ready we have about 2000 policemen governing the entire thing to before we went for the blast and finally the d day came the demolition date august 28 at 2:30 pm and at 2 o'clock the first siren rings 2:27 the second siren rings and at 2:29 the last siren goes then the countdown happens and the blast happens so let's see what exactly has happened through this video
We can see that the damage is done. So these are some of the so these are the some of the videos. Different channels covering that. Sorov, सबसे पहले हम आपको ये तस्वीर दिखाएं। ये आप मलवा देख रहे हैं, डुबरी में तब्दील हो गया। सबसे बड़ा मेजर कंसर्न था कि आसपास के स्ट्रक्चर, वाइब्रेशन और जो स्ट्रक्चर हैं, आसपास का अंडर कंस्ट्रक्शन, उसपे इसका इफेक्ट क्या होगा? ये आईआईटी मेड्रास और साथ में जियो स्ट्रक्चर की टीम है, जो कि कोचीन से आई है। इन्होंने पूरा एनालाइज किया ये वो टीम है अगर जो आप पीछे एटीएस या फिर सुपरटेक एमराल्ड या फिर पार्सवनाथ देख रहे हैं वो स्ट्रक्चर इंटैक्ट कैसे रहे तो इनसे बेहतर कोई नहीं बता पाएगा क्योंकि पूरी स्टडी का जिम्मा और पूरा इसे इंटैक्ट रखने का जिम्मा इन्हीं के पास था आ, क्या नाम है आपका और कहां से आप तो दिस आर सम ऑफ द वीडियो क्लिपिंग्स एंड यू कैन सी दैट बिफोर the buildings were like that and after that building is no more it's not uh, it's all demolished and gone uh, and uh, the structural stability of the near post demolition the works are going on structural stability of nearby buildings is uh, uh, verified and make sure uh, made sure that there is not damages there the demolition waste is under uh, removing process is going on the remains has to be reused as much as possible concrete and iron also would form bulk of debris and they are being processed again and is going to be used again. And concrete parts are used in construction of roads and making aggregates. So this is the review of Super Truck 10 Tower. Yes, this like it was pointed out by Ramanandra Rao, sir, that law is above everything. Law needs to be enforced strictly on officials responsible for providing clearance, builders and contractors. Transparency of law is needed. The government and other in charge officials should make measures to prevent construction rather than demolishing it after construction. It is always better to avoid creating a problem rather than thinking of a solution after creating it. The demolished apartment was constructed in a span of 80 years. So we should also <laughs> think about the impact, <clears throat> economic impact along with the environmental impact. And according to me, let us not waste crores of money energy and capability just to demolish it in few seconds. Alternatives needs to be opted rather demolition to avoid environmental impact and sustainable alternatives. And let us, uh, it took years to build only few seconds to demolish. So let us not allow an illegal building to come up in the first place. And let us learn from this lesson and carry it across the country so that we don't have illegal buildings and we won't have to go to the extreme action of getting the building down unless the safety of the people are up in this thing. So let's look into some of the photo gallery. Uh, so this is the team from IAP and this is Mohan Ramadhan from ACT who was supporting us with the calculation. This is the uh, no, 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 no. main person no, from no, no, no. who was getting the team and this is Kevin. Uh, this is the team from Kevin, who is the person in charge from South Africa, who was the main person in the ground to convert drawings to the field for the execution. So this is the wiring. You can see how the blasts were placed. You can see the geotestal wrapping. And this is the team from Geostructurals. And like for in India, for everything, we, for, we take blessing to do plan. As it is the puja being carried out. And you can see that there is a couple of trees we lost. Other than that, it was a 99.5% perfect plant blast. And a little bit of a compound wall we lost. 
when the building came down. So that is where we are, uh, you can see that myself personally assessing the damages which has come in along with the team from IIT Madras. And you can see that the IIT Madras team monitoring the rubber cooking and you can see that certain area we had to bring it down such a way so that uh, we don't have to break it. And now the what is happening is that uh, the Akshay Kumar may play the role of the demolition engineer in the next biopic on Tin Tower. Soon in theaters, it's a gimmick, but they just picked it up and placed it here. And let's see the last video. This is a video in Malayalam. This is a hero in our uh, area. This is called Mohanlal. And he is, uh, these are a, it was a troll which was, came out during the 2020 blast. They were imitating civil engineers, their capability of construction as well as demolition. And let's look into, uh, this is the last video which I have. Panda biscuit ka chada hai. Ipo Conrad, construction. Yes, chalpa pani hu, chalpa pani hu. So thank you all for a patient listening and I am open to any questions almost 42 minutes and hope it was an informative session and any questions I am open for discussion to the best of my knowledge. Thank you all. Dr. G. Radha Krishnagar, do you raise your hand sir, any questions? Yeah, I just wanted to congratulate him for the good presentation he has made and videos and other things. Uh, yeah. The precautions they have taken also he has given. My question is, how much seismic on the Richter scale nearby buildings? So, sir, the impact was in such a way that we were controlling it in a range of less than uh, 30 mm per second. So, it will mm -hmm. be in the range of maybe maximum 1.5 to 2 scale only, not bigger okay. scale. So, that is where mm -hmm. we had the, it, you know, Delhi comes in zone 4 and uh, where we are expecting a range of about 6 to 7 scale. So, our mm -hmm. forces were only 1 by 10th of what will happen during a real earthquake which is going to hit the uh, Delhi area. Yeah. Good, uh, good evening, Dr. Anil. Uh, good evening, sir. Really an excellent presentation, very enlightening one. Uh, would you please uh, repeat the steps, the series of steps, the, the, the process of uh, uh, this thing, demolition, steps you have taken, which you have mentioned there. Yeah. Would you please repeat them. Yeah, the different series include that what we do is that we will have the first we do the surveying of the area, then we understand what is the logic which has to come down. We, we pre weaken the structure, we remove the non load bearing walls, and certain is we cut the shear wall also to cut the impact which is going to hit the ground. And then we do a test blast. We put that test blast there. We put low, small amount of explosive and go for the blast to understand how the behavior is happening. And then we wrap the entire thing with iron mesh, then geotestiles in order to prevent the flying debris going and hitting people. Like the way we see in Canberra, a girl was killed due to flying debris. So to protection of that, then the screening work is done. Then berms are made to prevent the impact of the vibration going to the other area. Cushioning's done. So much of precautions. So, so we spent about, uh, uh, about the entire budget for the demolition was 20 crores. And five crores was spent on instrumentation to understand what exactly is happening, whether it is happening as what we have designed. So that was the challenge, major challenge which we faced, and we were able to successfully implement it in the process. Now, the problem the, in the previous question, we were allowing only a minor weight to come down. If the major weight would have come down, it would have been equivalent to a five richer scale impact. And which would have been almost 500 times more energy. So we are, that is where the engineering challenges has to come into play. Thank you very much for the clarification. Anybody more, sir? No question, sir. I think uh, we will proceed. Thank sir, you, sir. Thank you, sir, uh, Dr. Neil Joseph, uh, sir. Uh, really, it's a wonderful uh, presentation with illustrations and uh, Beautiful videos with cases of failure and success 
of uh, blasting of these buildings. It really is a new subject for an electronics man like me. And uh, it's really, I liked it. And uh, even a layman can understand the way you presented. And it was a really wonderful presentation. And you have also explained in a very nice way and uh, also about the how to reduce shocking and all that pre-molition works. And you have described the entire procedure so nice way, what you must have done for months together in a span of, oh, I think, uh, less, uh, almost less than 45 minutes. It's a great effort, sir. And uh, I feel it is a great tribute to the uh, Professor uh, R.V. Allen uh, Rao, sir, uh, for uh, us to conduct a lecture like this. I hope... Uh, uh, our own Ram Rao sir, ex MLC will agree with me. That is a great tribute and rich tribute to the his father. Uh, uh, your uh, your lecture, sir, and really we thank you for uh, giving uh, an opportunity for Telangana State Center to have uh, this type of lecture and uh, and lecture by you. And thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And we are really indebted to your uh, uh, efforts of this engineering challenges and your company and also in associate in IIT, Madras, you have done a wonderful these things, sir. All the, you are saying 350 uh, skilled uh, persons are uh, being uh, involved in that. This thing is a great and great effort. It's not apart from the order of 20 crores or 50 crores. The amount is not the thing, but it is a great effort for the, I think, not only through Indians, it is a uh, rising uh, for, for the even the foreigners uh, in India in India and Indian company is doing this type of great work. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, may I request our Dr. Venkat uh, Subhaigaru so kindly to propose what of thanks. Thank you, sir, Chairman, sir. So it is my pleasant duty to perform the what of thanks after this program. Uh, respected uh, chief guest and speaker, Dr. Anil Joseph, President elect, IGS Council Member EI and Managing Director, Geo Structural Private Limited. Raugaru, ex MLC, and other family members of Dr. NVRLN Raugaru. Council members, Dr. ISN Raugaru. Hayye Telangana State Center, uh, Professor Moinuddin, and committee members, Engineer uh, Subredi and Engineer P. Ramredi, uh, Nayak, uh, past uh, chairman of IEA Telangana State Center, past president, past vice presidents, past, president, past honorary secretaries, corporate it gives me an immense, immense pleasure to perform this uh, present duty of proposing word of thanks. On behalf of the Telangana State Center of IEI and on my own behalf, I convey our sincere and profound thanks to Dr. Anil Joseph, FIE, President elect IGS, Council Member IEI, and Managing Director, Geostructural Private Limited, for addressing the gathering as chief guest and delivering the lecture. Thank you, sir. Anil thank Joseph. You, thank, sir. You. thank you. Thank you. I also thank uh, the past presidents of IEI, past chairman of IEI, Telangana State Center, past honorary secretaries, council members, committee members, corporate members, and other participants who made it convenient to attend this event. I also thank the representatives of media for their unstinted support to cover the proceedings of the event. Thanks to one and all. Now I request all of you kindly stand for national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dhavida Pukkada Vanka Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Ujjala Jaladhi Taranga Dava Shubha Name Jage Dava Shubha Aashish Maage Gahe Tava Jaya Gaga 
जनगण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे